In this lesson, we're going to start looking at the cyclic quadrilaterals, the cyclic quad theorems. But first, what is a cyclic quad? So if I give you a circle like that, and I draw a four-sided shape, a quadrilateral, and I make sure that the corners, the vertices of this quadrilateral touch the circumference of the circle. So you can see this corner over here is sitting on the circumference. Then I've got this corner over here is sitting on the circumference. So is this corner up here at the top and this corner over here at the top. They're all sitting on the circumference. Let's call this quadrilateral A, B, C, D. First of all, I hope you see that it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides. So quad meaning four. Now, because this particular quadrilateral has its corners, its vertices sitting on the circumference, this type of quadrilateral has a special name. It is called a cyclic quad. So a quad is only a cyclic quad when all four vertices, all four corners lie on the circumference. Here are some other examples of cyclic quads. Now, they don't always look beautiful. They don't always look pretty. This one over here looks very neat. It looks like a square, right? This one here looks like a rectangle. Remember, I'm saying looks like because we can't just assume that it is. It needs to have other meet other criteria and display other properties in order for me to be certain. But look at this one, for example. This quadrilateral A, B, C, D. It looks a bit funny, but it's a cyclic quad. It's got four sides, A, B. B, C, C, D, and A, D, four sides, and all of the corners lie on the circumference. Now just ask yourself for a second, is this a cyclic quad? I hope that you are saying, no, it's not a cyclic quad. Why is it not a cyclic quad? Because sure, A is lying on the circumference, B is lying on the circumference, and so is C, but D is not. So it is not a cyclic quad. And so the theorems that I'm going to be teaching you in this video and in the next one, they will not apply. Right, so here is a cyclic quad. As you can see, all four corners lie on the circumference. And what's interesting is if I had to, you can see that over here, this is a cyclic quad because A, B, C, D lying on the circumference. But if I had to take this circle away, move it away, delete it, erase it. This is still a cyclic quad. And that's something that we're going to speak more about in grade 11, a little bit later in this playlist that you need to get used to. So even though the circle might not be there, A, B, C, D is still a cyclic quad. So there is a circle, it might be invisible, that exists you know, around those points. And we will be able to prove why or how it's a cyclic quad using the theorems that I'm going to show you in the next few videos. So the first one that I'm going to show you is very, very important. And it's a very nice, a very easy one. And it's a theorem that says the opposite angles of a cyclic quad. So when I say opposites, I mean A is over here. Look opposite A. So who's A looking at? C over there. A and C, those are opposite angles. So let's highlight them in blue. Those are opposite angles. And then we have angle D and angle B. Those are opposite angles. You can see that they exist opposite one another. And what's interesting about a cyclic quad is if you construct a proper cyclic quad, you will note that their opposite angles always add up to 180 degrees. We say that their opposite angles are supplementary. The opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. So if this one is x, then c is 180 minus x. Because think about it. If a, let's say a is 20, 20 degrees, how would you get angle c? Well, if they add up to 180, then angle c would be 180 minus 20. c would be 160. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. This would be your statement. Adding them together gives me 180. And this would be your reason. Remember, every time you have a statement in geometry, you need a reason. Opposite angles, cyclic, quad, supplementary. So let's look at a few examples together. Let's pretend I gave you this cyclic quad, A, B, C, D. It is a cyclic quad because all my corners are here on the circumference. And I asked you to find the following angles, M, N, and P. How would you do that? Well, Maybe you start with M because generally in questions like this, it's a good idea to try and do them in alphabetical order. So M, that shouldn't be difficult. We can work in this top triangle. 
triangle A, B, D, that one over there. And we will find that if I add those three angles together, it should give me 180. That's a grade eight, a grade nine theorem, grade 10 theorem, angle sum triangle or sum of angles in a triangle. So M is therefore 30 degrees. Remember, statement and reason. Now you might think, hmm, I wonder what I can get next. There's different ways to approach this question. What I'm noticing, and because we're doing cyclic quads, is that A, B, C, D is a cyclic quad. So what that means is that this angle over here and this angle over here, so 80 plus P, that together must give me 180 because of our new reason, opposite angle cyclic quad, so P is 100. And you can use that theorem as well to find M. And you might be thinking, but ma'am, how do we do that? Well, this angle, angle B, that angle is opposite the following angle, this one over here, angle D. So angle B, which is 30 plus 55, that 30 plus 55 is angle B, plus angle D, which is equal to 70 plus N, what do they give me? They give me 180 because of opposite angle cyclic quad. So N is equal to 25 degrees. Another way that you could have done this, if you found P first, which we actually did, P is 100, you could have worked in the following triangle, this triangle over here. And you could have said, well, 100 plus 55 plus N those three angles added together must give me 180. And you would end up getting to the same conclusion that N is 25, but your reason would be angle sum triangle or sum of angles in a triangle. What about this example over here, example number two? Well, I've labeled the vertices of my quadrilateral. It might look a bit funny, but this is a cyclic quad because look, one, two, three, four, four sides. So it's a quadrilateral and it's a cyclic quad because all the corners are on the circumference. What do you now know about cyclic quads? Their opposite angles add up to 180. So it might be a bit funny to see, but I hope you can see that H and F, these angles, those are opposite each other. So C plus 80, that adds up to 180. So C is 100. You can skip to the statement automatically. Your reason, opposite angles of a cyclic quad. And then maybe a little bit easier to see, these two angles, angle E, which is D, plus angle G, which is 3D. So D plus 3D, what do those two add up to give me? Well, they're opposite angles of a cyclic quad, so they add up to give me 180. Same reason. So now we just do basic algebra. D plus 3D is 4D equals 180. So therefore D is 180 divided by 4, 45 degrees. In the next video, I'm going to look at slightly more challenging examples. So stick around for that video and I can't wait to see you very, very soon. Bye everybody.